Are you a princess? Maybe. Really? Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Oh, Prince Super Charming is back. Yeah. It's happening. This is recording now, and we'll be recording the whole time. Kozlo was a convicted felon. He is also an informant for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We have a buyer. I want to take everything you got, Kozlo. You're a cop. If these guys find out you're a cop, you're a dead man, you understand? I'm going to give you one chance, and I'm going to give it to you in a few seconds. Yo, freeze! That's where I can see him, NYPD! This is bad business. Storzik tells me that the cop was pointing the gun in your face. You now owe the price of your life to Wojtek. How much is your life worth? Rick Hong here for Hollywood First Look Features. Today, I'm with Joel Kinnaman, and we are talking The Informer. Joel, I wanted to tell you congratulations, because anytime your name's on something, I'm always watching. Love hearing that, my man. <laughs> So I noticed at the end of the film, you know, I got to the end and uh, the credits said, based on a Swedish novel, you're Swedish. So is that a coincidence or is that kind of how you became a part of the project? Uh, this time around, it actually was a coincidence. Um, and I, I didn't figure that out until I was already sort of on board with it. Um, so yeah, it, it, was, it was trippy. And so I read, I read the Swedish novel after, it's a great novel. It's quite different, you know, okay. uh, you know, because here, you know, we've moved, uh, everything takes place in, uh, in New York and, and the characters are, you know, is from New York. Um, there's still the, the Polish uh, mafia element, but it's with Polish immigrants uh, instead of like actually in Poland. Um, but th there are, there are similarities and, and, you know, I recommend everyone to read the book. It's, it's, you know, action packed, uh, uh, you know, suspense thriller book. It's really good, but um, but the, the, the film is quite different. Well, I guess what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to like brush up on my Swedish, then I'll read the book and then... <laughs> yeah, you don't speak Swedish? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, exactly. Well, your character in this goes to a prison. So how was that? Is that a working prison and they had you like in a wing or was it an empty prison? I don't know if you're a little freaked out because I've been to Alcatraz and Alcatraz freaks me out. Yeah, it was it was that was, it was actually pretty trippy. I, like I've always wanted to make a prison movie. Uh, it, I, to me, it, it's one of those things that I think uh, a lot of guys, you know, we we fantasize about. Like, you know, it's 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 a nightmare, of course. But like, how would we do in a, in a prison? And you know, it, it, it's a uh, it's one of those things that you that, that that I think, especially growing up, you have in your imagination, and you hear about people. And you know, I had some friends that went to prison for a long time, and. Oh, wow. and hear of their journeys and uh, so it's, it's one of those kind of um you know things that you just really want to avoid but but you can't help like imagining what it would be like we shot this actually in this segment of the film we shot in london and oh, okay. so it's an old uh, english prison that had been shut down i think like 10 years before we we uh um we got to shoot there so um, but it was built in the late 1800s, and uh, you could feel the it, that, that place had a lot of ghosts. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, yeah. well, so then you're already a naturally buff guy, but since you know that you're gonna go to prison, and you know you're you're gonna have some of these scenes, and like, do you get more buff? I mean, are you just eating like vegetables and chicken, or it's just like, no, dude, that's I guess I naturally like I was okay just to go into the movie. I didn't want to, yeah, I, I mean, I definitely like uh, stayed in shape for it. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, I, I wasn't on like a crazy uh, training regimen for this one, but but it was definitely, uh, I, I knew I had a, a couple of shirtless scenes in it. So I was like, I don't want to, you know, embarrass myself. <laughs> well, so I noticed like this theme of you are, you know, you play a dad a lot. And so I don't know if naturally you have these like paternal instincts, because you know what, for all mankind, you're a dad, you know, here you're a dad, you're also a dad in Hannah. Yeah. And I'm constantly nagging on my girlfriend. I'm like, <laughs> <"Dad>, babies. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm always, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll borrow my friend's kids <laughs> and, uh, and, and my sister's kids and, 
Oh, that's awesome. Well, why have you? We can break it right here, right now, if you want to. So your director, James Gunn, said, what two characters do you think are most likely to survive in Suicide Squad 2? So if, if you want to tell me, I mean, I'll, I'll break it. Can't do it. <laughs> Not allowed to. Well, I'll tell you what, congratulations on all your success. I love all of your work. I can't wait to see you in Suicide Squad 2. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Thank the you. The movie is... Until next time, I'm Rick Hong, and you've been watching Hollywood First Look Features. You will break your parole. Get back to prison. If anyone can get drugs inside, it's you. I want out. We go along with the general's plan. Evidence of fentanyl being methodically distributed inside a state prison buries the general for good. And if that happens, you're a free man. If you go back inside, you'll never get out. I'm here to investigate the death of somebody very close to me. We can't have this detective find out that an FBI informant was present during the murder of one of his own. You want to pitch your field office against the biggest police department in the world? We love us a good fight. Vendetta on my mind like a sick pleasure. What are you thinking? Burn him. He has a family. We looked him in the eyes. We made him guarantees. I don't have kids. I would suffer too much if something happened to them. Please, Daddy, come back home. I'm scared. I'm doing everything I can. I'm coming for payback. I'm the hangman, and I just put a tight noose around your neck. I'm, I'm not getting out of this. This ends now. Surprise.